Hello, my name is Jens Stapelfeld and I'm talking about CMSIS, the Cortex Microcontroller Interface Standard to you. So before we start talking about the standard, um, I want to set the scene by, well, talking about the complexity of software design today. And it's shifting from being as complex as hardware design and shifting into be much more complex writing software today for uh, embedded systems. So the increasing demand and uh, requirements for the implementation of software and becomes more and more complex. And we are shifting solving problems we have in hardware into doing them in software. So we don't have a standard like uh, the AHB standard to easily connect peripherals on a chip bus in, in the software technique. So we need to have something similar in the software technique to make it easy to connect IPs and written software to each other. So ARM has introduced the Cortex microcontroller interface standard. So what is CMSIS? CMSIS is the Cortex Microcontroller Software Interface Standard and it provides an abstraction layer for all Cortex-M processor devices. It's developed in conjunction with the semiconductor world with tools and middleware partners. So the CMSIS peripheral access layer defines uh, a layer for peripheral registers and to write to these registers, it's providing um, vector definitions for exception handlers and interrupt handlers. So it will provide functions to access core registers and peripheral registers, and it will help to implement an interface for the RTOS kernel. And it provides in support for debugging channels like doing printf style debugging for and for Arthos kernel debugging. So the CMSIS middleware access layer provides some common methods to access communication devices like USB or Ethernet. So Compiling software and components allows then much easier setting up much easier examples for uh, applications and providing templates for setting up embedded software code. So looking at the structure from CMSIS, we have the hardware layer, our MCU, and with the Cortex M devices, there is much more in these devices than we used to have before. With ARM. So we have, for example, a Zystic timer provided to have an easy access and to build easy implementations for an Artos kernel. So we need to have something having a Zystic timer or providing uh, a clock. We have implemented in the Cortex M architecture a fixed vectored interrupt controller. So that is fixed and is with every Cortex M device the same, and the registers for this are the same. We have provided some new debug features and trace interface, which is fixed and the same for all Cortex-M devices. So all the other peripherals implemented here will need to have a similar way to access this. And this is provided with CMSIS, a layer on top of that. So this gives us a way to access these registers and peripherals and gives some definition for this. So we can set up our core peripheral functions on top of that, we can set up middleware access functions on top of that, and we can access and provide um, device peripheral functions on top of that. On top of this layer, we can then write independently of the actual hardware, we can write our real-time kernel and we can provide middleware components, which we can exchange independently of the actual hardware implementation of the semiconductor itself. So this will then give the um, application code or writing application code. This gives the opportunity to software people to write application code for Cortex-M devices with exactly or without knowing exactly the implementation of the hardware. So that makes it much, much easier to exchange or swap the actual hardware device independently of the implemented vendor of Cortex-M3 device. So let's have a quick 
look who provides which information and what is hold in which files. So the compiler vendor independent files are then, for example, the files provided by ARM about the basic information of the Cortex-M device, or in this case a Cortex-M3 device. There is a header file and there is a C file. So there will be a device specific file as well, which has a header file which is then for a specific device of a specific vendor implementation of M Cortex M3 core. And some setup or system setup file which is then the system underscore device dot C which holds all the specific information of this uh, implementation of the Cortex M device. So there is some compiler independent information so that you can use any compiler which is CMSIS compliant, which in this case could be an IAR, an MDK, or ARM, or a GNU. There will be additionally some setup device.s files which hold some specific information to set this core up. You will find these files and the setup from uh, CMSIS on the onarm.com webpage and there will be the latest releases of these different files and you can download them for free from this website. Having a quick look into some example code. Um, so this is some example code for in-device. So for example in CMSIS we have agreed to call all the internal handlers, so the Sysstick timer or something then underscore handler for example or for a timer which is then externally from the core itself will be called IAQ dot IAQ handler. There are some other uh, agreements on for example the bits and bytes on the vector interrupt controller set priority or enable IAQ. Another very interesting example here is the function this system in it which hold all the information on how to set up the specific device that you just can use this system init function in your main code and the setup is done then specifically in this file. So all specific setup for your device is hold in system init and that will be for CMS's compliant code in this function. I have another example here for example from uh, STM 32 implementation. This file then will hold, for example, the information of how if this Cortex M3 is implemented with an MPU, which is an option from ARM, or with which how many uh, priority bits this core is going to be implemented. So you can easily look into this file and you know the implementation option. In this case, what ST Microelectronics or how ST Microelectronics has implemented the Cortex M3 with which optional devices. Another very interesting area for the CMSIS is it provides some solutions for debugging. So the ITM debug access port gives us 32 channels, and with the 32 channels, CMSIS defines the channel 0 as an ITM put char function. So you can do some printf style uh, debugging here. The channel 31 is reserved for Arthos kernel debugging. And we have an example in our on our website you can download to have a look how this works. So Dulos is a training provider and it's an armproof training center for many many years and you will find the getting started with CMSIS on our website. So feel free to have a look and thank you very much for listening.